Hi friends! I'm Maiko with Nexus Motion. Today I'm going to talk about the importance of motor control. I know that's a big topic. That, uh, physical therapists like myself are the professionals who take care of the movement system. And it's easy to appreciate the musculoskeletal system when we think about movements or exercises. But let's not forget that the nervous system is always always involved with controlling movements, right? Now, without the nervous system, we can't move. It's like the difference between hardware and software. So the musculoskeletal system is like the hardware, and then the nervous system is like our software. So you know how our smartphones get frequent updates for the new operating system? usually happens when I'm charging my phone at night and then in the morning the new OS is installed to fix all the bugs that weren't working very well. I wish the same thing that happened to my body overnight but that's not the case because uh, if it did we would be moving perfectly right? So when we wake up we still have the same nervous system with all the same habits and the same motor recruitment patterns unless if we start making changes in how we move every day. So the new operating system is finally installed when our nervous system goes through a proper motor learning process. And then we don't have to think about how to move and we can just simply do the task or activity or the sports movements and do them really well. So a good example of appreciating the importance of motor control is working with bodybuilders. They're amazingly strong. Now, but I have met many bodybuilders who don't move perfectly. Uh, just because they have strong muscles, uh, it doesn't mean they move optimally because really it's up to the nervous system uh, and how those muscles get used. So my patient who does bodybuilding had some numbness tingling down the arm and some shoulder discomfort with overhead press-ups. Right. So he had hypertrophied upper trapezius and levator scapula, and in fact hypertrophied everything else too. But when I watched him do the overhead reaching, his scapula wasn't elevating enough. And once we practiced the timing of elevating the scapula, his symptom went away the strong upper trapezius and levator scapula, they weren't being used properly. So my focus with this patient was retraining the nervous system so he could use his hardware correctly. And that itself just worked fine to get rid of his symptom. Please keep watching this video series. There's just a few more principles of MSI that I'm gonna share. I hope to see you next time. Bye guys.